Hi guys, and welcome to Byte's Friendsgiving Feast. I'm inviting my friends at Byte to create the perfect Friendsgiving menu full of unique twists on holiday classics. So today, Teeny has taken on milk buns with homemade rosemary butter, roasted garlic mashed potatoes, and a delicious gravy. Mm, mm, mm. That double garlic. Right, let's get cooking. Hi everyone, I'm Teeny, and welcome to Bites Friendsgiving Feast, the place to watch, explore, and cook for the holidays. This holiday season, we created the most amazing Friendsgiving menu for you to cook up at home. Today, it's all about the carbs. I'll be making homemade milk bread buns with the herby garlic butter, creamy roasted garlic mashed potatoes with gravy. Alex and Zoya will be taking on the sides, and the amazing Claudia will be taking on the turkey. Then Gordon Ramsay will be tying it all together and taking our leftovers and making it into a real holiday treat. This is Bite's Friendsgiving Feast. Let's have some fun in the kitchen, y'all. I like being extra during the holidays. That's why I'm going to make everything from scratch because I feel like from scratch is with love. So holidays equals love. That's why for this Friendsgiving menu, I wanted to make my milk bread rolls and mashed potatoes because you have to have those. <laughs> These milk bread rolls are gonna be nice, light, fluffy. And then on top of that, I'm making homemade butter as well, and it's gonna be like a herby, garlicky butter. Putting those two together is just mwah. So for the mashed potatoes, I'm gonna roast the garlic because I really want it creamy, buttery, garlicky. It's perfect for the soul. Also gonna make some gravy as well. Let's get to cooking. First, I'm starting with my milk bread buns. I absolutely love milk bread. They go good with anything. I might be a little biased, but. First, we're gonna start with the starter. The starter is what makes it light and fluffy. And I'm pretty much making like a roux. On medium heat in a pan, add my water, my milk, and my flour. And I'm just gonna whisk. I'm looking for it to be thicker than a paste, but thinner than a dough. Now it's thickening and that's what we want. That's how thick you want it. So now I'm gonna let this sit and cool over here while I add everything into my mixer. So first I'm gonna put my flour in. Next I'm putting my sugar in, my milk powder in, then my yeast. Don't put your salt on top of the yeast or you're gonna kill the yeast again. We don't wanna see that number. Oops. If your milk's too hot, then it's gonna kill the yeast. So I'm gonna put some milk instead of the salt. I'm putting that down, milk. Putting my melted butter and one egg. Now it's safe to add the salt. And then I'm gonna add my starter in there. Now I'm gonna mix and the mixer is gonna do everything for us. So I'm gonna start on slow so it can incorporate everything together and then I'm gonna put it on medium so it can really knead everything together. Okay, I like that. So it is a wet dough, but that's what makes it nice, light, fluffy, and airy. So oh, it's like slime. So I'm gonna put it in a grease bowl and cover it with some plastic wrap. I'm gonna let it rest in a warm place until it's double in size. And while this baby rests, we're gonna make some butter. Homemade butter is literally heavy cream. There's multiple ways to do it. Today we're gonna be using a whisk, but the old fashioned way is they churn it and that's too much. You're doing that for hours, I'm not doing that. So I'm going to add the heavy cream in here and then I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. I'll start to know like when the butter is forming because first it'll be like whipped cream. Um, I don't want that whipped cream, it'll be salty whipped cream. But like the liquid and like the solids like separate from each other so that's how we'll know and then we can just like squeeze it out. Right before it turns into butter, this is whipped cream. So um, now you know how to make whipped cream. Now we're gonna continue to mix. I also like making homemade butter because I can customize it. What I like to make with my butter is like a honey cinnamon butter, but we're going for more of a savory. So today we're gonna add some like roasted garlic, some herbs, so it's gonna be like a nice herby butter. So as you can see, like the solids and the liquids have like kind of separated from each other. So now I'm going to take a strainer and some cheesecloth and then literally just pour it in. This is separating the liquids from the solids. So this right here is the butter. Sleeves are coming up. Oh, that's satisfying. The individual droplets. So now I'm just wringing out all the liquid and we're gonna move on to the potatoes. So the potatoes that I'm using for my mashed potatoes are Yukon Gold potatoes. I already sliced them, diced them. I'm not gonna sit here 
and peel them. That's too boring. TV magic, I already have them diced. I like using these because they're fluffy and I feel like these are perfect potatoes if you like a more creamy mashed potato. And you can see these are all cut around the same size because you want them all to cook evenly. To start, we have to cook the potatoes. I will be adding the potatoes into a pot and then covering them with some water. I like to salt the water like I do with my pasta. Also, I cover these in cold water too because I want a nice even cook. It makes the mashing process easier and you can't really mash uncooked potatoes. So while these come to a boil, I'm going to grab my dough that's been proofing and I'm gonna shape them into the buns. Okay, so the dough has doubled in size, so now I'm going to divide them into my little dough balls. I love. So the texture of this dough, it's tacky, but it's not sticky, like it's not sticking to my fingers. We don't wanna use any extra flour because we really want that fluffiness. And you can see already there's a bunch of air bubbles and that gives us that air and fluffiness of the dough. So I'm gonna divide this into seven pieces. I'm so bad when it comes to portioning. I like to eyeball it, so sometimes it takes a little bit longer because I'm trying to get it even, but that is why you should also use a scale. But I don't feel like using one. See, these are even enough. I have my round pan that I'm going to put my rolls in and we're gonna grease it with butter. We really want that flavor, we want the butter flavor. That's what you have New Year's for, for like um, your resolutions. Then you can worry about how much butter you eat. Okay, so I like to shape my balls like this, like put them in like L shape, kind of glide between my thumb and my pinky. Then just put it in my pan. Bread always goes fast to my family, we love bread. So definitely bread doesn't last. Okay, done. They do have to proof one more time. So I'm gonna cover these with some wrap. These can also go in the fridge and you can slow proof them. So you can make them the night before. So you can just pop them in the oven when you're ready to go. I usually put my dough in the oven. That's just where I find like the warmest part of my house. So in the oven, not turned on and let them proof there. This is where we make the roasted garlicky cream for the mashed potatoes. So how I make roasted garlic is I just cut the tip off, I put it in the foil, I hit it with some oil. Oh, we're rhyming here. And then some salt and pepper. And now you just scrunch it up. And then I put it in the oven around 400 degrees. I let it roast for like 40 to 45 minutes. So we already have our roasted garlic now, so I'm gonna add it to my heavy cream. This is gonna enhance the flavor of the cream and the cream is gonna go into our mashed potatoes, so more flavor. My hands are gonna smell like garlic for days now. I love roasted garlic. I mean, I just feel like it has a deeper flavor. I like to be punched in the face with flavor. Next, I'm gonna add a bay leaf. I just love the way it enhances the cream. And then I have butter too, cause I like a nice buttery mashed potatoes. I add some salt and I'm gonna add pepper. So now I'm gonna add everything and I'm gonna get it to a low simmer and then I'm gonna mix everything because I want the garlic to also get in there as well. You can really smell all that garlic and the cream and the butter and the bay leaf. I make mashed potatoes about three times a week, so this is not new to me. I always do this process. It's not something I just do for the holidays. I do it because I love potatoes. Gravy is something I do for the holidays. Okay, so this looks good to me. It's simmering, so I'm gonna take it off heat and I'm gonna let it steep. I'm gonna move on to the gravy. First thing with gravy, you have to make a roux, and then we are going to use chicken stock. That's gonna make our gravy. So on medium heat, I'm going to add my butter. I'm gonna let that melt first before I put my flour in. This is 10 times better than using gravy in a jar or like powdered gravy, and it's so easy. Next, I'm gonna add my flour. I'm just gonna give this a mix. I just wanna cook all the flour out. And I bet if I could've used Claudia's turkey stock from this, it would've been so good, especially with the flavor she's using. So the flour is pretty much all cooked out, so I'm going to move from a spatula to a whisk because I wanna get all the clumps out. And I'm gonna add my chicken stock. I'm gonna pour it in and then just whisk as I go. And I'm just gonna keep whisking until it thickens up and becomes a gravy. So the gravy's thickening up. I'm gonna season my gravy with some salt and pepper. This really smells like Thanksgiving. I like a nice thick gravy. I like to have my gravy completely coat the potatoes. Um, I don't want it to just make my potatoes runny and watery. My ratio of gravy and mashed potatoes, I like a good like one to one. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt to it. Okay. So my gravy's done. All we have to do is just put the buns in the oven and then mash the potatoes and then we will be ready. 
Okay, we're almost there. I'm excited. So these are the dough balls that I have proofed. They doubled in size and ready to be egg washed. My egg wash is just one beaten egg whisked up together. That's it, nothing special. If you don't use egg wash, it'll still be bread, but it won't be like that nice golden brown with that like nice ASMR tap on top of it. You know what I'm saying? The little so these are gonna bake at 350 degrees. So now I'm gonna check on my potatoes. When they're tender enough for the fork to go through, yep, that's exactly what's supposed to happen. They're done, they're fully strained. You want them nice and dry because water just like loses the flavor. I'm gonna use a ricer for the mashed potatoes. It's gonna give me that nice creamy, fluffy mashed potatoes. And I'm just going to smash them in. So a lot of people have like different types of tools that they like to use for mashed potatoes. I prefer a ricer because the ricer just gives it that nice fluffiness. So mashed potatoes is one of my favorite sides for Thanksgiving. I also love mac and cheese, um, a quick hot take. I hate stuffing, but from what I know, Alex and Zoya's stuffing might convert me because it does sound pretty good. So the one thing about stuffing that I really don't like is the texture. So theirs is rice, so it might be something different. So I'm gonna grab my melted butter and my heavy cream. I'm just gonna grab my bay leaf, or you don't wanna eat that. And I'm going to slowly pour a little bit at a time and then just fold it right in. So this smells amazing because I have all the roasted garlic in here that's been steeping and pretty much like marinating. So it smells delicious and I know it's gonna taste delicious too. Okay, so everything is nice and mixed together. This is the consistency that I like. It's good. That one single bay leaf really brings out so much like pungent. This is all ready. I'm gonna put it into like a baking dish. I'm gonna make it nice and pretty. The last thing we have to do is make the herby garlicky butter for our buns. So the butter has been sitting and straining. We're gonna take this out of the cheesecloth. So what I have to make my herby garlicky butter today, I have some chopped up parsley, chai, roasted garlic. I'm just gonna squeeze in however much I feel like. Now I'm gonna smush the roasted garlic and then just mix everything together. And now I have herby garlicky butter. If you don't like butter, keep scrolling. Now it's time to get the buns out of the oven. They look perfect. The egg wash really does a difference. Look at the golden brown and then, hold on. I love putting chives on mashed potatoes. I think it just gives us the extra oomph. Everything's done. We have my milk bread buns here looking beautiful and sexy and plump as always. And then we have my creamy mashed potatoes. We have my gravy. And then of course, the garlicky herby butter. And I'm so excited to eat it. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at it. We're doing a squish test, a little. Now we're gonna add our homemade garlicky herby butter to our homemade bread milk dough. It's not dough, I did so good. You know what, it's bread, we know it's bread. Next is my mashed potatoes. I love mashed potatoes. Gravy onto the potatoes. It's more like two to one, but it's okay. Ready? <laughs> Mmm, the butter already melted too. Mmm, they're so good. They're literally my favorite bread. I can't get sick of them because I feel like you can add whatever you want to them. The garlicky, herby butter, that's perfect with it, especially with the homemade butter. It just tastes better. These will definitely get you the validation you need if you bring these to a Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving, whatever giving you're doing. Mashed potatoes next. Mm -hmm. That's the mashed potatoes I like to eat three times a week. Ooh, that hit that double garlic. All right, let's get into the rating. 20 out of 10, let's go. The effort that you put into both of these things is 100% worth it. Your friends and family will taste the effort that you put into it and they'll absolutely love it. I know these are gonna taste so bomb next to Claudia's turkey and it'll pair so well with Alex and Zoya's sides. It's just gonna fit right in. As much as I wanna take all of these with me, these leftovers are gonna have to go to Gordon because he's gonna make some cool dish with all of our leftovers. Make sure to check out the rest of the Friendsgiving episodes you're not gonna to wanna to miss. If you wanna see more holiday recipes, hit that subscribe button. Happy Friendsgiving, y'all!